Hey folks, Damien from Southpaw Designs, and today we're going to take a look at one way that you can separate yourself from your competition, and that's learning to master the art of the inlay. Now, several months ago, I posted my first inlay video, and it's been very successful. I'll link it down below, but today we're actually going to look at two different ways to create inlays using your CNC. The first way that you'll see right here is very simple and easy to do. The second way you'll see right here is a little bit more complicated but it will allow you to do things that you cannot do using this method so stick around and see both of them in action and really learn how to up your game on your cnc to begin with let's begin with the easy inlay now this is going to use a fairly simple letter i did choose a font called homestead which does have some sharp 90 degree corners right here and that's going to cause us a small problem if we really want to get in those corners um, the font that i'm using is called homestead and so once i've created this simple letter you can go with something more advanced if you like we're going to come over here and take a look at our tool paths now i'm not going to go into extreme detail about everything what i would rather do is place a link in the in the description below to a video a great video done by greg's garage uh, that actually explains how to do this using a v-bit i'm just going to talk about uh, how we would do these two different types he did an excellent job of explaining it and if i were to try to go into those details i would basically be stealing his thunder so i'd rather give him the credit all right, so now how do we do this? All we really have to do is take our shape and create both a male and an e, uh, female inlay. Um, I'm going to continue to call it male and female just because I know it's going to make somebody mad and uh, that makes me laugh. Um, so we select that and then we make the, we can either use both a profile and a pocket or we can use the inlay toolpath. Now, I prefer to use the inlay toolpath because the inlay toolpath is going to recognize that whichever bit you use is not going to be able to get into those sharp corners. And so it's going to make a, uh, a concession uh, and adjust that on both the female and the male. Because these interior angles, your bit would not be able to get into that corner because it is a round bit. All right. So that's just a simple explanation of what's going on here. So now let's jump over to the CNC and actually create this. So now that we have our wood prep, this is going to be a quarter of an inch thick piece of walnut, and that's just a piece of pine right there. In fact, this is an old fence picket uh, that I just cleaned up and planed down. I'm going to use the simple CA glue and tape method, or you can use double side tape if you happen to have it in your shop. And the first thing that we're going to cut out is going to be our um, mail or our plug. Now I've sped this process up. And we'll go ahead and jump to the finish here. Now I should have gone about another, I don't know, 30 seconds of an inch deeper to get rid of these uh, little burrs, but I can easily clean those up with a quick little sanding. All right, and now let's go ahead and cut the, I just said go ahead again. Now let's cut the female, which is going to be our pocket. Nothing really radical here, although I should have used a down cut bit instead of an up cut bit. That would have gotten rid of those burrs right there. I'm going blind and I can't see the difference between the two. All right, now that we have it cut out and cleaned up, all that we really have to do is pop those two pieces in there. Now this one actually ended up fitting much better than I thought it would. And once I popped it in, I couldn't get it back out, so I didn't even have a chance to glue it. Now, if you take a look right here, you'll notice that those curves are not nearly as tight as they should be because of the roundness of the bit. So that's method one. And while it works, it could be a little bit better. Now let's move on to method number two. And if you've made it this far, I do appreciate it. I would appreciate it also if you'd hit the like button down below, subscribe if you haven't, and then always leave a comment. I'd love to hear back from you. Okay, so let's take a look at method two. Now, for method number two, this is going to use a V-bit. And once again, I'm not going to go over incredible details in VCarve Pro because I think Greg's Garage does a better job, does an excellent job of doing that. I encourage you to watch that if you'd like to learn more. 
but we will need to have two different versions because the positive and the negative, or the male and the female, has to be two different files. This would actually be the plug or the mail side, and uh, it's actually going to be a reverse of the, um, uh, of the female. So it's going to actually be a mirror image and backwards because we're going to press the two pieces together. All right. Now, for this, I did use two tool paths. One was a clear because we have to get rid of this stuff right around here. Uh, otherwise, we won't be able to press it down into the female pocket that's created. Uh, I did them as separate tool paths because you do require a tool change. Um, then we have the V bit right here, which is going to make a, um, a V bit path that allows us to press it in. Now let's take a, take a look at the female side, which is really just going to be a V bit tool path. So, oops, let me close that. I've already got it created, and if we take a look at it, we see that it is a V-carve, and let's preview it, and these are the results. So this is going to be the female side, and the male side is going to fit down inside of it. When we examine the toolpath, you'll see that we have a start depth of 0.1 inches and a flat depth of 0.1 inches, and we're also using our 60-degree uh, V-bit. Again, uh, Greg explains it much better in the Greg's Garage video, but I wanted you to see what's actually going on here. So next we'll go to our CNC. My CNC of choice is the Onefinity Woodworker X50. Uh, I always like to use the X, Y, and Z probe. And once we have that, and I'm gonna skip through a bunch of this because this takes a long time, but I have my V-bit cutting out my pocket for my female side. Now, like I said, I'm gonna speed this up and just show you a bit of the highlights. But we can see it from the beginning, the middle, and then now we're finishing everything up. And let's take it off of our spoil board and take a look at it. It looks nice and clean. I like that. Once we have the pocket done, now we're going to switch over to our mail side or our plug. Also going to use the V-bit to cut everything out. And just as I did before, I'll speed through a lot of these different sections. Now I did dodge a bullet right there. When I made my square that I actually have to cut out, you'll see how close I got to that nail. When I realized how close I had become, I about uh, dirty soiled my pants. But thankfully I was within about a 32nd of an inch of hitting that nail. So you'll notice I get rid of it as soon as I can, as soon as the CNC is moved out of the way and I can take that nail out. Once we have the V bit done, now we're going to clear out the rest of the pocket. Now you don't necessarily have to do this if you want to take it to your bandsaw and scroll saw uh, and cut it out, but I would just rather cut out as much of it as I can. It did take a little bit too long, so I could have been much more aggressive uh, with getting rid of this, but it, it took a little while. <clears throat> <clears throat> and now that we're finally finished, let's remove it from our spoil board. Take a look at them side by side and they look great. So let's actually see what happens. Let's go to our uh, bandsaw and cut off those extra pieces. Because remember, since this is going to be a plug, it needs to be able to fit down inside. And it's not going to fit down inside with those extra pieces on the end. Next step is to fill it with glue. Now you always want to make sure you have a little bit of space in that pocket so that you can put plenty of glue in there so that it will, will have room for that glue to hold. I put way too much in, so I'll wipe some of this away. Then we press it down and clamp it up. Once we're completely clamped, we let it dry, then we come back over to our bandsaw. Don't make fun of me here, I'm still learning how to use my bandsaw, it's a new investment. <clears throat> and we're going to cut off that extra piece. Now, I take it over to my spindle sander and I try to get rid of as much of that uh, part that's still sticking up as possible using a 60-bit grain. And once we have that done, then I'll move over to my random orbit sander. Uh, and I'll finish it up with a 120 and a 220 grit.
Now that everything's cleaned off and nice and flat, I'm going to use some Odie's oil. Uh, I like Odie's oil. It's natural. It smells nice. And it really brings out some of the great color there. It's expensive, but a little bit goes a long way. I highly recommend it. Now let's take a look at the two of them side by side. Both of them look nice, but there's an obvious difference between the simple one done with the simpler method and the more advanced one done with the V-bit method. And I like that much better. Hey, next, uh, next week, I'm going to be going out and doing some lumber shopping. I'm going to go to Woodcraft and pick up some kind of crafty pieces as well as going to my local lumber yard. So in the comments below, tell me what particular species of wood that you guys like the most for the different types of projects that you create.